What a week week two was in the 2023 college football season. What's going on YouTube? This is SG1 Sports and you're watching our college football channel. Let's get right into it. Again, ton of big games happening in week two. This was, I even said this before the season, this was going to be one of the biggest weeks of the season. And uh, I think it, it didn't disappoint. We'll start with our number one takeaway. Texas is back. And yes, Texas is back. I believe this is a serious playoff contender. They just went on the road and beat Alabama. Alabama's got some issues. We'll talk about them a little bit later. But uh, just talking about this Texas team and what they were able to do. Quinn Ewers looked great. Uh, they've got a quarterback now that is is in command and, and looks like you know one of the best quarterbacks in the country. Uh, they've got weapons all over the place on offense. But it's really, I think, the reason why Texas is, is different now is because of the offensive line, which didn't look great against Rice, uh, they went out and dominated against Alabama, at least in the pass protection area of the game. Um, I thought Ewers had plenty of time to throw in this game, which allowed them to hit some of those deep plays. Uh, the run game was good. It was pretty good, it's, especially against a, a team like Alabama. Um, I, I should probably backtrack and say they didn't dominate Alabama, but uh, for, for what you normally do to Alabama, uh, it was a really good performance. Uh, they held up, let's just put it that way. And then on the defensive side, it, they've got a really good defense now. And we saw that um, early on, Alabama was was hitting some big run plays in this game, but they really adjusted, really uh, stopped the run game. I mean, they were stuffing the Alabama running backs in the backfield a lot of this game, especially in that second half. And uh, Milrow just couldn't get it done throwing the football. So th this was just a great performance by Texas, but back to my point here, they are back. They are, they have everything you need to go out and, and be a playoff team. Uh, they, you know, the offensive line in years past hasn't quite been there. Defense has struggled at times and now they, they've got it all. Everything is there for Texas. I'm not saying they're going to win the national championship. I'm not even going to say that they'll make the playoff because uh, it's going to be a tough road, but uh, they're definitely back to being a legitimate contender. And speaking of contenders, I think Miami is now a contender. And when I say contender, really I'm talking more about ACC. Uh, I don't know that this is a playoff contender, but maybe they are. I mean, they have a very talented roster, and I ranked them last week, and a lot of people said, oh, why are you ranking Miami? That's terrible, whatever. Um, I, I could see it. And in game one, you could see this team was really talented and they had kind of put it together. It was a different team than what we saw last year. And boy, did they do that against Texas A&M. A lot of big plays on offense, uh, something they really had been missing. Tyler Van Dyke threw some amazing passes in this game. And if he can do that, maybe they are playoff contenders. Um, the defense played really well in the second half against a pretty good Texas A&M team. And, and I do... All right, so there, you're going to have one group say that, well, Miami and Texas A&M are both bad. They were both – they didn't go to a bowl game last year. This doesn't really mean anything. But I'm on the other side where I believe what I – based off what I've seen, Miami and Texas A&M are both very good football teams, and they're very improved football teams. And so I do think this was a very impressive win. Um, I'll give, go ahead and give you a spoiler. When I do my top 25, I'm going to have both of those teams ranked because I do believe they're both top 25 teams. Uh, but yeah, Miami, you look at their path now, uh, they have a really good shot of getting to the ACC championship. And who knows, maybe they can even contend with Florida State. Uh, Clemson, I, I, they struggled out of the gates in their game against an FCS team this week. I know they did get it together there, but I still kind of have some question marks about Clemson. But Miami getting this win just proves that uh, they are legit. They are a contender. And again, I'm mostly talking about in the conference, but maybe in the college football playoff. I need to see a little bit more before I'm willing to go that far. Uh, but they'll have plenty of opportunities ahead of them to prove that. All right, number three, Notre Dame. I think they proved that the Navy game was not a fluke. And, you know, that's what I talked about. They had all that time to prepare for the triple option. They, you know, Navy just has not been good in recent years. So, so going out and dominating that game, really... I didn't know if it was because Notre Dame was that much better or because Navy was that bad. And I think they proved, uh, Notre Dame proved that they're legit and they're playoff contenders uh, and they might actually make it. You know, you look at the schedule, all of a sudden Clemson looks like a, a game that they might can win. Ohio State looks like a more winnable game. They've been struggling a little bit. Uh, so Notre Dame is, is looking like the real deal here. And Sam Hartman, you know, I wondered how much of a boost was he going to be to their offense? Um, I think he proved it with some big pass plays, um, and, and that was the story here in this game. Some big plays down the field, um, so the long run play they had, just an explosive offense, something that they have been missing. 
Now they've got it. They've got that great run game. They've got that great defense. Uh, Notre Dame is is legit, so watch out. I mean, we're starting to see already Texas, Miami, Notre Dame, Washington, Penn State. We're already seeing some teams prove that they're going to be really good this year, and this playoff race might be really, really fun. All right, number four, the SEC is down. The Pac-12 is not, so I'll try to quickly go through um, each of these conferences. So we start with the SEC. You know, it was already a rough week in week one. North Carolina beat South Carolina. LSU lost to Florida State. Uh, you know, it just was not a great week for the conference there in week one. There was another game now, and it's it's slipping my mind. Um, but they just uh, have not gotten off to a great start. And then you go to this week, Alabama loses to Texas. Uh, you had... It wasn't just that game. It, it, you also had Vanderbilt really getting blown out by Wake Forest. Wake Forest, Wake Forest doesn't look great this year um but you know we don't know how good they're gonna be and you can go down the list here with just teams that struggled arkansas struggled a little bit against kent state missouri only beat middle tennessee by four kentucky was down against eastern kentucky for a lot of their game mississippi state was i think a nine point favorite had to go to overtime to beat arizona um auburn looked terrible somehow they were able to beat cal uh, thanks to their defense but they were favored in that game uh, by I think that's about a touchdown, and they barely won. Texas A&M losing to Miami. Ole Miss uh, had to come from behind to beat Tulane without Michael Pratt. Uh, Tennessee was up what 13 to six at halftime against Austin P. I mean, you just go down the list. Uh, Georgia was scoreless against Ball State in the first quarter. The SEC just did not look good, and we knew you know a lot of new faces, especially at quarterback on some of these teams, and, and just didn't know how good the SEC was going to be this year I don't think you know I'm not ready to write the conference off but it's just been a rough start and I think we can say that the SEC is not as dominant as they have been and back to Alabama I said I'd talk about them more when I was talking about Texas you know the problem for them is if you have one of two things on offense an offense that can stretch the field and hit big long pass plays and then you or that or you have a dual threat quarterback uh, that really gives Alabama's defense trouble. And Texas was able to put up 34 points in this game. But I think a bigger issue is quarterback. And Jalen Milrow just cannot read a defense. Uh, you know, he can throw a good deep ball. He's got a strong arm. But uh, we, we saw that last year. And that's why I – all right, I know I, I messed up this week. But I picked all offseason I had Texas beating Alabama. All offseason. You watch my videos. I did change my pick because I overreacted to week one, and more about that in, in just a minute. Um, but, yeah, they've Alabama's got a problem here, and Texas proved that, like, again, like I said, they are the real deal. Uh, but Alabama, you wonder how – and can they bounce back from this? I, you know, I, I look at some tough games on the schedule, Tennessee, LSU, Texas A&M. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be tough for Alabama, I think, to run the table the rest of the season. Uh, so you look at them being down, and, again, all these other struggles, I still think – you know, you're probably going to wind up with at least a couple teams in the top 10 at the end of the season. But just the overall depth of this conference is not what I expected it to be based off of the first two weeks. That could change. Problem is, these teams could get better and better. But uh, when they get better, they're going to be playing each other and they won't really have a chance to prove it against other conferences. So that's interesting as well. But looking at the Pac-12, um, you know, I just talked about Arizona and Cal almost winning in games where they were underdogs. Uh, we saw Utah and Oregon struggle a little bit, but they got wins. And, of course, the conference was undefeated coming into this week. Uh, Washington blew out Tulsa. Uh, the big win for the conference really was Washington State over Wisconsin, a game where they were an underdog. They won. Colorado dominated against Nebraska. Uh, UCLA dominated against a pretty good San Diego State team. So just overall, a good week for the conference, again, in the Pac-12. No, it wasn't perfect. No, you did see some losses there. Arizona State lost. Um, I don't think I think all their losses though were were teams that were underdogs though so they didn't have any favorites lose this week uh, so again that is, is still a sign of, of a pretty good conference Pac-12 has improved a lot um, the SEC may be down a little bit but kind of back to what I was talking about earlier uh, we had way or I maybe you didn't but I had way too many week one overreactions you know I thought that Utah based off of what they did to Florida based off of Baylor struggling against Texas Tech thought that Utah would roll in their game. They did not. They had to come from behind 
a struggle win for them. Same thing with Oregon against Texas Tech. You saw Texas Tech lose to Wyoming, Oregon winning big. They had to come from behind. In fact, you look at the two fourth quarters in these games, Utah outscored Baylor 14-0. Oregon outscored Texas Tech 20-3. So both teams had to really pull it out in the fourth quarter. But uh, good teams do that. And I believe, uh, I still believe that Utah and Oregon are good football teams, especially Oregon. Um, Utah, without Cam Rising, I don't know how good they really are. Um, but yeah, just so many overreactions. I talked about the change prediction that I made. I had Texas all offseason. All offseason, I said Texas was going to beat Alabama. And then we saw them struggle just a little bit against Rice. And Milrow looked great against Middle Tennessee. And I overreacted to that, and I picked Texas to win that game. Obviously a mistake, and I wish I had stuck with my pick. But anyways, uh, yeah, that, that was an overreaction there. Um, j- just a lot of things that we saw in week one where we thought, you know, Tennessee looked so good against Virginia Maybe that was an overreaction. Now, all of a sudden, against Austin P, they struggle. Uh, you could just kind of go down the list. Just a lot of things. Again, North Carolina, great win over South Carolina. You know, it looked like that maybe this is a top 15 team, and then they go out, and I know it's App State, and they just, for whatever reason, struggle with them. But they had to go to a double overtime to win that game. Um, so, again, you just go down the list here. A lot of, a lot of uh, things from week one that we can take away, but a lot of things that I think we overreact to. And we're not going to know, and I say this all the time, we're not really going to know a lot about these teams until we see them play uh, four or five games. So we'll learn more next week. I'm going to try not to overreact too much to week two like I did in week one. Uh, But we'll, of course, have a new top 25 and all that um, as we go through the week. All the normal videos that I do, the playoff eliminator, the upset alert video, all that coming. uh, Predictions as well. So keep it right here as we get ready for week three in the college football season. And give me your takeaways on week two down in the comments below.